What up? I'm Chef Pelka, and this is the Braves Time of the Vlog. We've made it to June, and we're coming up really quickly on the June draft. The Braves are picking third, and it's their highest pick in a very long time. It's the highest pick the team has had since 1991 when they picked second overall. To commemorate the June draft for the Braves, though, I wanted to make a video commemorating the top five picks the Braves have ever made in the June amateur draft. What's the criteria? Literally, you just have to have been drafted by the Braves during the June amateur draft. From that, I ranked them according to the wins above replacement that they accumulated in their career, brave or not. So naturally, this excludes players like Hank Aaron or Phil Necro because they were never drafted. Back then, you just signed with the team. You didn't bother with the draft. This list wasn't very fair to current players who are currently racking up wins above replacement. That being said, it's a historical list, so if they continue to rack up wins above replacement, maybe they'll show up higher on the list. As long as in several years, I make a video about the exact same thing which is unlikely. So, I'm giving honorable mentions to Freddie Freeman, second round choice, 16.9 war to date. Ryan Klusko, fifth round choice, 26.9 war. Brian McCann, second round choice, 28.8 war to date. Jason Hayward, first round, 14th overall, 31.5 war to date. Hayward and Freeman, I'm sure, will be much higher on the list by the end of their careers, but for now, they just missed the cut. But now for the actual list. Number five, Adam Wainwright, 32.7 war. The one who got away. Yes, the Braves drafted Adam Wainwright. In the first round, they drafted him 29th overall back in 2000. I didn't script saying this, but I'm just realizing Adam Wainwright is old. It's rare that aces slip out of the middle of the first round, but we found one at the back of it. Unfortunately, we didn't value him enough, did we? The Braves traded Wainwright to the Cardinals for one year of J.D. Drew. In all fairness to the trade, J.D. Drew was as good as you could have gotten. He hit 306 and 31 home runs in his one year with the Braves. He warred 8.3. So as rentals go, that's as valuable and as good as it gets. But as you can see, Wainwright would have been the better investment. He's been good for 32 wins above replacement. He's a three-time All-Star. He's pitched in a lot of World Series games. Like a lot. He's finished in the top three in the Cy Young voting four times. I would take Wainwright over J.D. Drew any day, but in order to win 14 straight divisions, you have to make decisions like this. Number four, David Justice. 40.5 war. Drafted in the fourth round of 1985, Justice is probably the best middle of the draft gym the Braves have in the history of the organization. Justice put together a great career. He's written in Braves allure already. He was a rookie of the year. He was a three-time All-Star. I was shocked to see J David Justice played in seven World Series. 91, 92, 95, 96, all with the Braves. Then he went to the Indians in 1997, made it. And then there's 2000, and then there's 2001 with the Yankees. The only seasons of Justice's career that didn't end in the postseason were 1990 in his rookie season and 1994 when no one saw the playoffs. Two top five MVP finishes, a very impressive and underrated career for David Justice in all honesty. He's not Hall of Fame numbers, but a very impressive resume for a career. What does that mean for Braves fans? Top notch fourth round pick. Whoever was the GM that made that pick in 1985, I don't know who it was. I'm pretty sure it wasn't Bobby Cox yet. I'm not gonna look it up, but well done. Number three, Dale Murphy. 46.2 war. Dale Murphy was taken in the first round, number five overall. So Dale Murphy was a 6'5", 210-pound college power bat, taking number five overall. I don't know who the four guys were taken in front of him were, but they better have looked like Thor. Murphy was drafted in 1974, and he debuted in 1976. He was really ahead of his time in terms of quickly developing college bats. And then he put together a great career. Two MVPs, seven All-Star appearances, five gold gloves, four silver sluggers. He finished with 398 home runs, which is just shy of the 400 that the Hall of Fame likes to see. He finished with 46.2 wins above replacement, which is just shy of the 50 that the Hall of Fame voters like to see. What does this equate to? Dale Murphy finishes just shy of the Hall of Fame. He's not a Hall of Famer, but he is one of the greatest Braves of all time. Third best pick in the history of the organization. When you find a Dale Murphy like that in the top five, you take him. Number two, Tom Glavin. 74.0 wins above replacement. That's all according to BaseballReference.com. Typically, I use Fangraphs, but Fangraphs was down when I found all this information, so this is what we get. Tom Glavin was a second round pick back in 1984. He slipped out of the first round 
And can you blame anyone? He was a two-sport athlete, six-foot tall, low-90s fastball high schooler from Massachusetts. Frankly, I'm surprised he went in the second round, but I'm sure glad he did. Glavin had a quick development. He debuted in 1987. From 1987 to 1990, Glavin went 33 and 38 with an ERA in the mid-fours. Shows you that some pitchers are worth sticking with. Jake Arrieta, did you say something? No? Just checking. But they did stick with Glavin and Smoltz for a long time before they turned into Cy Young pitchers. Glavin was a huge risk to go on in the second round, and frankly, if I found out this year that the Braves drafted a, a six-foot, low-90s lefty in the second round, I'm not gonna be happy either. But sometimes things just fall into place. Number one, Chipper Jones. 84.0 war. Chipper Jones was one of the most predictably great players of all time. Everyone knew he was going to be great when he entered the draft. King Griffey Jr. was the first player of all time to get drafted number one overall in the June draft and then make it to the Hall of Fame. Chipper Jones will be the second. Since then, there's been Adrian Gonzalez, Joe Maurer, David Price, Stephen Strasburg, Bryce Harper, Carlos Correa, so just keep an eye out. In all honesty, it was just sheer good fortune that the Braves landed Chipper Jones. Think about how rare it is that a talent like Chipper Jones comes along, and by that I mean a player that everyone knows is special when they're 18, and they can follow through and be right about it. And then you have to have the good fortune to pick number one overall. The Braves had the worst record in the league multiple years in a row, but they only drafted number one once. If it had been in 1991 that the Braves ended up with the number one pick, they could have drafted Brian Taylor, the high school pitcher that the Yankees picked there. The next time that there was a consensus number one overall prospect was 1993 when there was an A-Rod, but then the next time after that was 1999, which was Josh Hamilton. The selection of Chipper Jones as the number one overall pick can't be attributed to shrewd scouting. It was, it was just sheer luck. It, in all honesty, it's fair to say that the Braves owe more to Chipper Jones than Chipper Jones owes to the Braves. That's all for this episode. Remember, my name is Chip Apelka. I'm a film student doing a blog about the Braves. This is the Braves Tama blog. I put up a video every week or so. Check out my other videos if you enjoyed. Please like, please subscribe, talk to me about the Braves, message me, hit me up. Be patient and the Braves will be good again. I promise.